charge an EV, you would normally use a public EV charging station with either fast speeds or perhaps slower speeds, or you would use a permanently installed home charger like the one I've had for the past year or so. But there is actually a third option. You could use a portable EV charging cable, something like this, this 15 amp portable EVSE from DE. This allows you to plug into just any Australian power point that you'd be likely to find anywhere in Australia, or ideally a faster 15 amp power point if you have one available to get better speeds. And then you plug the other end into your car and use that power source to charge your EV at granted fairly slow speeds. DE did send me this free to test it out and show you, but I can say anything I want about it. To get the best charging speeds, you would ideally plug this into a 15 amp power point. So hopefully maybe you have one in your garage or at work or something, or you could always get one installed, but that would require an electrician. Or where I actually use 15 amp charging the most is if you go to pretty much any caravan park in Australia and book a powered site, all of those power points are typically going to be 15 amp. So it can be a really great option if you're camping or something and you want just an overnight top up from that powered site. Or if you are on a super remote EV road trip in a place where there are no working chargers in super remote parts of Australia, it can be a great backup option to be able to top up enough to bridge the gap and make it across to the next working fully EV charger. Using a 15 amp power point, you can get about three to 3.5 kilowatts, depending on how strong the voltage is, where you've plugged in. So some caravan parks, the voltage might be a little bit lower, so it might be a little bit slower, but generally around three to 3.5 kilowatts. This is very slow charging. You don't want to be waiting around for the car to finish charging like this, but it can give you roughly an extra 23 kilometers of range per hour, which really doesn't sound like a lot, but if you leave it charging for quite a few hours throughout the day or maybe all night or all day while you're at work or something, you can actually end up adding like 200 kilometers of extra range to the car while it would have otherwise just been sitting there doing nothing. And for most people, if you can do that sort of a few times a week, you can kind of just completely cover all your regular driving just by plugging it into a 15 or even 10 amp power point when it's convenient to do so. But if you don't have a 15 amp power point available because they aren't all that common in homes and things, and if you aren't going to install one right now, what you can do is grab the included adapter cable like this. And there's basically a 15 amp power point on this end. So you plug the charger into this and then this end is just really like a very short 10 amp extension cord. So this will plug into any regular Australian power point that we use for powering basically everything. So you should have no trouble finding somewhere to plug this into. Just plug it into any power point. You'll almost certainly have one in your garage or hopefully even outside on the wall of your house if you park outside in the driveway or something or even run an extension cord out the window, that's less ideal, but you could potentially do something like that. There's loads more options for this. You just plug it in somewhere there, and then just make sure you adjust the current from 15 amps down to, you can go as high as 10 amps, but 10 amps is the maximum power that a standard Australian power point is designed for. So you don't want to have it higher than 10 amps. 15 amps would probably make it trip a switch, or even if it doesn't just possibly cause safety issues and stuff. You don't want to be pulling more power than the power points designed for. So turn that down to 10 amps if you are using this adapter to use it from a standard 10 amp power point. But then you can just go ahead and plug in your car. And this will obviously give you slower charging speeds than a 15 amp power point, but you'll still get around two to 2.4 kilowatts. And you can add about 16 kilometers per hour charging off a standard power point like this, which again, doesn't sound like very much at all, but it can give you about an extra 100 kilometers overnight, which for most people through like normal routine driving, 
is more than you need if you do it every night. The charger itself is fairly simple, but overall very nice sort of quality feeling. It all feels well made and honestly better quality than some other chargers I have used before and still have. And the charging plug has an IP55 waterproof rating and the box itself an IP66 waterproof rating. So it is perfectly fine to charge outside in the rain if you are having to charge somewhere outside. It's all sealed well enough to be rained on. Probably wouldn't want to submerge in water, but for rain, perfectly fine. There's no Wi-Fi or app or anything, but you do have this little screen directly on the unit where it will show you things like the current amps and volts and charging power that it's currently doing because amps times volts equals power in watts and then there's 1000 watts to a kilowatt so that's that's how that works out there and it shows you how long it's been going for which in this case is 14 minutes so the car's been plugged in for 14 minutes and so far it's delivered 0.4 of a kilowatt hour there and that is handy to know if you're charging somewhere and the owner of the place wants to know how much power you've used or something, you can take a picture of that or something. And while it's charging, you can press and hold these two touch buttons here at the same time. And that will pause the charging. So the car will not be charging right now. As you can see, zero amps and zero kilowatts, but it's still kept all the details and the car's still actually plugged in. So we can at any time just press and hold to restart the charging once again, and it will take a second, but it will start charging again. I'm not sure exactly how often you would use that, but if you ever do need to briefly stop the charging, there is a way you can do it without having to unplug and replug the car. When you do unplug the car or before you plug the car in, you can also use this A button here to adjust the amps, so the current or the charging power. So you can see on the screen it's currently set to 10 amps, which is the maximum for a standard power point. But we can press this and go up to 13 amps, or press again up to the full 15 amps, which is the maximum of the charger. And if we press it again, we'll get down to six amps, so that's less than the maximum of a power point. This would give you about 1.4 kilowatts, which is very slow, but sometimes you might want to charge that slowly. Or you can do eight, or back to 10. Just remember, if you are using the adapter to plug this into a standard, normal 10 amp power point, don't turn it up above 10 amps. It might work for a little bit, but it is technically kind of dangerous. You could start a fire or something by using more power than the power point's designed to give you. So keep it under 10 amps, but you could go six or eight or 10 amps on a 10 amp power point. Or if you are plugged into a full 15 amp power point, you can choose any option you like. This can be helpful if you're plugged into some power source or something where it keeps tripping or it's an off-grid system that just isn't working right with the full power. You can scale it back a bit to something that works a bit more reliably. Or it can also be good if you are trying to charge off spare solar. So you want to maybe turn the charge rate down a bit to more closely match the spare solar power you have rather than unnecessarily pulling from the grid and then filling up the car and then not charging for a bit while there's then solar power going into the grid. So it can be helpful for things like that. Just make sure you don't go above what you're allowed to go for on your power point. It might be nice if you could adjust the current while the car's charging. So you could say, it's on 10 amps now, I'd like to put it to 13 while the car's charging and just press that to increase it but it actually doesn't let you do that. You have to unplug the car, then change the current and then plug it in. But that's not a big deal and maybe there's some sort of safety limitation or something there. And the other button down here will allow you to set a timer to basically delay when the charging will start. When I use a portable charger like this, I really just want to plug it in and get as much power as I can the entire time I'm there and plugged in and then unplug and move on. But if you were using this as more of a permanent home sort of setup, maybe you get home at 6 p.m. but you and you want to plug the car in immediately, but you get cheaper power after 10 p.m. or something, you could first use this timer button to set a timer in 30 minute increments. You can set as long as eight hours. So maybe we'll put a five hour timer there. 
Then you can plug the car in immediately, but it won't actually start charging. As you can see, it will just start counting down that timer and it will only start charging the car once that timer ends. So you can delay the charging until you have a cheaper rate or for any other reason you might want. A lot of EVs will have some kind of charge scheduling function in the software on the screen. So you can do similar stuff with the car, but if your car doesn't have that or does, but it's just like really bad and doesn't work very well and you don't like to use it, you do have the option of doing it on the charger as well. When the car's unplugged, you can also press and hold these two buttons once again and wait for it to beep twice and that will put it into no grounding mode and then you can double press and put it back into grounding mode. What this will do is when it's in no grounding mode, it will allow the charger to charge the car even if it isn't detecting a working ground on it. The main use for this would be if you're trying to charge your car from a portable power station or something or from the V2L of another EV maybe in a portable sort of situation like that where there clearly can't be any grounding pin in the ground you can turn it to no grounding mode or sometimes if you're in like a caravan park or something that maybe has a dodgy ground that the charger deems unsuitable you can put it to no grounding mode and still be able to charge there. It's not a huge deal, but some mobile chargers do have issues and get a bit fussy about grounding. So it is good to be able to turn that off if you really need to. It does come with these mounting brackets. So one to hold the charger and one to hold the plug. So if you want to use it at home as really quite a permanent charger setup and keep it plugged in all the time, you can actually mount it to the wall if you want to and have a very neat setup and plug your car into it and use it every day. And then you still can just slide the charger out and unplug it and take it with you on the occasional road trip or something to also have it as well. But since I already have a permanently installed home charger, I don't really need it for anything like that. I just keep it in the car all the time. And it does come with this fairly nice zippable carry bag here that you can put it inside and has a handle and rubber on the bottom so you can put it in the boot or under the boot floor or in the trunk or something if you have one and it won't slide around and it can all be very neatly in the car in case you ever need it and I just keep mine in the trunk with the type 2 to type 2 cable it's just great peace of mind to know you always have something like this with you whether you're on a road trip or something and have the opportunity to do a convenient top up somewhere where you're parked. You can just plug the car in if you're gonna be there for a while. It's great if you're at a caravan park or something, you can top up on a 15 amp charger. And what I find is the really main nice use for it that I use is it's good as a backup option. If you're somewhere where there are no charges within range, if you fall short of a charger, if the nearest charger breaks down and isn't working and you can't make it to any other charges, you have this backup option of going to really any power point or ideally I would usually use a caravan park with a 15 amp plug and you can plug it in here and it will take quite a while. You'll probably be there overnight, but you can always top the car up to a good level of charge to make it to the next real charger. And I can tell you after having driven right around Australia in my EV, being able to do that is basically essential in some parts of the really remote places. The charging network's getting a lot better, but there were a few times I had to use a 15 amp charger. And there's also the occasional time where you have broken charges and things where you kind of need to. And also sometimes where it's just nice to have. I was sleeping in the car a lot, so I would mostly go to powered caravan parks anyway and be able to top up the car overnight while I was asleep. It was great. To be clear, I didn't actually have this charger yet. I was using a different one that I had at the time, but I'm now carrying this one with me and I will use this one if I ever need something like that in the future. My car and certainly quite a few other EVs do come with a basic 10 amp EV charger. So this will not give you 15 amps and it doesn't have a screen or any other features, but you can plug into a standard power point and get 10 amp charging. So this is a great start. If I didn't have any 15 amp chargers, 
I would bring this with me. I'd carry it in the front. And this is actually what I used for home charging for the first several months that I had my car. But if your car did not come with one of these or you don't have it or it's broken or you specifically want 15 amp charging for better speeds at caravan parks, which is really why I bought my first 15 amp EVSE, or if you want the screen or scheduling abilities or anything like that, or if you need it longer, you can get this in up to 25 meters of length and plug into a power point that's really quite far away. The DE charger really is a very good option. And if you're interested, I do have a coupon code EV Adventures for $10 off on their official website. So if you are going to buy one, you can get $10 off there. But that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. And I do have another road trip coming up next week.